This year, July is somewhere in the middle. Throughout the July night sky, you'll have the chance to spot planets, shooting stars, and even some deep space objects. July is also a fantastic month to stay up late and observe the Milky Way, as the Earth is tipped toward the galactic core and we can see it stretching across the sky in the Northern Hemisphere. Unfortunately, we are plagued by long days due to the June solstice, but I really can't complain about that since I love the long daylight of summer. July 6th, Series at Opposition. For those not familiar with the term opposition, it means that a solar system object and the sun are opposite of one another with the Earth in between, kind of like the alignment of an eclipse over huge distances with other celestial bodies. When this occurs, the sun strongly illuminates that object from our earthly perspective, making it brighter and easier to spot. July 12th, Mercury reaches its evening peak. After reaching its morning peak in May, Mercury has swung around the sun and now appears in the evening sky for us. It will reach its highest in the sky around July 12th, just 13 inch above the western horizon. Mercury is truly tiny. I just spotted it for the first time recently, and only my photo, above, verified that I had actually seen it. Unlike my photo above where the moon guided me to Mercury, you'll want to use bright Venus to lead yourself to Mercury if looking in the mid-July evenings. July 21st, full moon. The moon will reach full phase. At this time of the month, it is visible for much of the night, rising at around dusk and setting at around dawn. The buck moon. The sequence of full moons that fall through the year are sometimes assigned names such as the buck moon, according to the months and seasons in which they fall. July 23rd, Pluto at opposition. Following the celestial alignment of its fellow dwarf planet Ceres, earlier in the month, Pluto will reach opposition on July 23rd. The sun will brightly illuminate Pluto, making it a great time to view everyone's favorite dwarf planet. You will need equipment to see Pluto, which is small and extremely distant. Be sure to review my recommended telescopes and binoculars to find something in advance. You'll also probably need a Starfinder app to spot Pluto which is in the constellation Capricornus. July 28th, peak of the Pisces Austrinid meteor shower. The first in a trio of meteor showers that round out the month, the Pisces Austrinid meteor shower will peak on the night of July 28th. This is according to most sources. I also found that the American Meteor Society predicts it will peak on August 7th. So you might also try looking on that night too. As its name implies, this shower can be seen lower in the southeastern sky of the Southern Hemisphere. To try and spot Pisces Austrinid meteors, you'll need to stay up late. The peak is expected to occur around 3 a.m. local time, and the radiant point will be in the Pisces Austrinus constellation. The maximum rate of meteors you can expect to see will be about 5 per hour. July 30th, peak of the Southern D. Aquarid and A. Capricornid meteor showers. Two more meteor showers provide the final good stargazing and meteor spotting opportunities of July, and both peak on the night of July 30th. The first is the Southern De Aquariids. Better viewed from the Southern Hemisphere, or further south on the Northern Hemisphere, you can expect to see a maximum of around 25 meteors per hour. Look for the constellation Aquarius in the southeastern sky to try and identify the radiant point. The second meteor shower on this night is the A. Capricornid, a much less active shower with an expected maximum rate of five meteors per hour. The constellation Capricornus will be in the south-southeastern sky, not far from Aquarius. It'll be hard to tell which meteors belong to which shower, but together they create the prospects for an interesting night. Like 2023, 2024 is a big year for lunar occultations, that is, times when the moon passes in front of other objects in the night sky, from our earthly perspective, of course. Of course, the moon is always passing in front of stuff, but certain lunar occultations are notable, particularly when it passes in front of another planet in the solar system. There are the close approaches and lunar occultations in July, July 1st, 
close approach of the Moon and Mars, 3rd of 49 ice apart in Aries. July 15th, close approach of Mars and Uranus, 32.1 arc minutes apart in Taurus. July 24th, lunar occultation of Saturn, visible in East Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. Otherwise, a close approach of the Moon and Saturn, 20.8 arc minutes apart in Aquarius. July 25, lunar occultation of Neptune, visible in Oceania. Otherwise, a close approach of the Moon and Neptune, 29.9 arc minutes apart in Pisces. July 30th, close approach of the Moon and Mars, 4 degree and 5 feet 4s apart in Taurus, and close approach of the Moon and Jupiter, 5 degree or 18 apart in Taurus. As close approaches go, some of these are among the closest of the whole year, so get out and enjoy them if your skies are clear. Do you have questions about these astronomical events in the May night sky? Let me know in the comments below. For space updates, subscribe to Secrets of Space.